Hey guys, it's Alyssa Marie, your intuitive reader. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Welcome to the pick a card reading of the messages from Lemuria. But before we get started, it would help me out so much if you guys subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. I have a regular upload schedules of Tuesday and Thursdays. If you are interested in a personal reading or crystals, candles, guided meditations, etc., the link to my Etsy is down below in the description box. So before we get started in today's video, um, I also want to talk just briefly about what Lemuria is, okay? Lemuria, also known as Mu, that is M-U, is said to be an ancient civilization that happened here on planet Earth. Now, there is a bit of debate um, whether they were actually physically here on planet Earth at some point or if they've always ex existed in a higher dimension. Um, but either way, they existed here in this planet. Um, now, they are said to be a society of true embodiment of the divine feminine. And uh, I, I have a video you can go check out. I'll, I'll link that in the description box below because I don't want to talk about it too much here. I'll just do that. So if you want to know a little bit more about the Liberians, I recommend you go ahead and check that video out. But okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we have three piles here. We have pile number one, two, and three. Um, I'll quickly go over. We have a shell for pile one. We have a cute little crystal rainbow fluorite turtle for two and a gorgeous aquamarine point for pile three. So go ahead and pick which pile you are intuitively drawn to. If you wanna pause and think on it, you can. We're gonna go ahead and start with pile number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these two, whoopsies, sorry about that guys. Move these two out of the way. All right, let me just adjust myself a bit. All right, if you chose pile number one with this shell, these are your messages, the messages from the ancient Lemurians. So let's see what we have here. The first card, beautiful. These cards are gorgeous, by the way. We have the heart chakra, unfurling back to love. Lovely. We also have crystal keys. Look at that. And if the numbers mean anything to you, we have five and we have 22, we have two, two. And then we also have 34 life force energy. Wow, look at that image. This is a beautiful deck, by the way, guys. I do highly recommend picking this deck up. Um, it is gorgeous. So the first thing I can tell you, pile number one, is if you don't already work with crystals, now is an excellent time to do so. Um, crystals are so powerful, right? And of course, I have lots of crystals in my shop if you guys are interested. But, you know, especially with the Lemurians, there are said to be particular Lemurian seed crystals in which the hidden codes are basically, they are within the crystal. And these codes are said to really help a future civilization such as, you know, humanity or a civilization past that. But these codes can really be translated by you. If you're able to tap in to that energy and decipher what that code means, it can be very powerful. Um, now, there are, like I said, specifically Lemurian seed crystals. I don't offer those. I would like to get some in my shop. But, you know, I think even past Lemurian seed crystals, crystals of any type, is something you guys are going to want to work with. Um, and when I talk about work with, okay, um, this doesn't mean you have to own crystals, sit down, put them in a grid, and, you know, have a whole ritual. You can. But also just wearing crystals, like as you guys can see, like I'm pretty much always wearing crystal jewelry, like a, a crystal. I like bracelets a lot. But, you know, crystal... Um, crystal necklaces, all of that, having crystals just in your room, um, that's really going to help you guys, okay? That's just a side note. But with this heart chakra card, you know, I think that you guys have been through a lot, okay? I can really sense this, especially with this life force energy as well. 
I think you've dealt with a lot of trauma and you've dealt with a lot of trauma, particularly in this lifetime. Um, but don't worry because again, this trauma that you have experienced for the most part has been pre-planned by you and it has made you ascend in a way unimaginable, okay? I feel a lot of rapid ascension happening for you guys, pile number one, that you already have done and will continue to do. But remember, we ascend and we descend. That is normal. But I think that, you know, you're very heart-centered. And, you know, I say this in so many of my readings, but when it comes up, I have to repeat it. With this, again, with these two cards, I can tell possibly, actually, I'm going to say for sure, in the past, I think you're a very giving person. I think you've you've really gave uh, to everyone. And the thing is, again, right, is that not everyone in our lives is as giving as we are. And so remember that your life force energy is absolutely sacred. It is powerful. It is your life essence. It is your everything. And so when we have interactions with other people on any type of level, even not even other people, but items like, <clears throat> excuse me, goodness, uh, like, and I shouldn't say items, but a, a tree, a rock, a crystal, um, all of these things have an energetic field. And every interaction that we have is those two fields interacting among other things but what happens is when we have a relationship of any sort romantic platonic familial coworker, whatever when we have these relationships where the energy exchange is not equal okay now it's okay if sometimes you know one person gives more than the other whatever but if it's a consistent one person's taking taking while the other person's giving and giving. This will create an unequal balance between your two energy fields, and that ends up draining one of the person's life force energies. So I can see that in the past, you have dealt with people like that. Maybe sometimes you were this person, okay? Because I'm not about to pretend you're not, right? A lot of times, you know, we say, oh, people were mean to us. Well, you know, we were probably mean to people too at some point. Hopefully not anymore, but, you know, at one point, you know, you might have been the person taking too much, and that's okay. But I think for the most part, you were the person giving too much uh, for most of your incarnation here. But it's something that I see you have woken up to. I think you've realized this. And remember, this is to people, but it also can be to situations. Um, it can be to behaviors. But you've realized the, the power of your life force and the next thing that you're going to realize and you're going to really, I want you to really integrate into your re your reality is that this life force energy can also be put into your crystals, okay? And what I mean by that is we can program our crystals. I actually have a video on that too about um, programming crystals. But you are able to program crystals. You are able to have a crystal's energy field um, the, each vibration, remember every object, every person, we all have our own energetic signature, energetic frequency. And so a particular crystal, you can really align that to your energetic frequency. And that crystal can help you manifest a lot of different things, okay? But to me, there's a lot of wisdom to be found. Um, as you can see on this image here with that crystal over her third eye, I really think that your third eye is really expanding at this moment. And um, I want you to really pay attention to that. In fact, I want you to pay attention to the number 222 two, two, or 2222 two, 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 or 2, any kind of twos repeating. It's just coming out for you guys with that Crystal Keys card. Um, and I want you to pay attention because when you see those numbers, this is actually the Lemurians reminding you about the life force energy. Now, the Lemurians were very much so Earth-based. They were a very divine feminine um, civilization, but they were very Earth-based and nature-based in the sense that, you know, they were very connected to the natural elements of Earth, like the crystals, like the plants, the, you know, the flora, the fauna, everything the Earth has to offer. Um, and I do recommend, you know, um, getting out in nature more, of course. In particular, I have never been to Hawaii. I would love to go to Hawaii. I haven't been there. Um, but 
actually in the guidebook of this deck, um, the author, she does talk about how she felt called to go to Hawaii. Um, in a lot of people's perspective, Lemuria, the last kind of piece of land that's that's like Lemurian, there's a lot of Lemurian energies, is Hawaii. So that, that's just something I thought I didn't mention to you guys. But what's amazing, remember, and what's so important, is that the most powerful force is what? What do you guys think it is? The most powerful force is love, okay? And that's something that can be possibly confusing to people, but love literally makes the world go round. And not only, you know, on planet Earth, but in our entire universe, in our entire multiverse, love is the most powerful force, Okay, and emitting and emanating love is what's going to make your reality beautiful. And I promise you that. Just doing everything you can with love. And that's hard, okay? Because we live in a society where it's hard. You know, it's difficult, but that's the point. You know, it, it is in a way, it is a test by yourself, okay? But uh, let's see if I have anything else I want to mention to you guys. When it comes to um, boundaries, I, like I said, I think you guys have really done that. I think you have really started to at least identify and say, okay, this person, they're not so good for me. This job, they're not. it's not so good for me. This belief system I once held, no longer good for me. And that is good and that is okay. But continue to going forward, always set proper boundaries because remember that life force energy is so important. It is so, 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 so important. And if I could tell you two really important facts from this reading is one, your life force energy is so important and two, the most powerful powerful force is love, okay? Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this pile number one, and I hope I'll see you again next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right, if you chose pile number two with this cute little rainbow fluorite um, turtle my gosh I couldn't say the word turtle today um we're gonna see what messages the Lemurians have for you so the first card out is air number 13 air with paradigm shift we also have alignment number 18 gorgeous gorgeous cards and number 12 with water the overflow oh I love these cards so much you guys okay so the first thing I can tell you Pile two is you have been doing some major, major spiritual energetic work, a lot of work here. And this can be energetic work that you are aware of. It can also be energetic work that you're not necessarily aware of because a lot of times when I tell people that, if I tell them, you know, you've been doing a lot of energetic work, they're like, well, I haven't really felt like I've been doing anything. But the thing is, is that our, you know, our auric, our ethereal body, our energetic body does things all the time and even researching, you know, about particular civilizations like the Lemurians by just reading a book about it, looking it up on the internet, changing, you know, what we eat for the better, um, balancing out sleep and, you know, etc. Doing those things is a way that we're shifting. But you can also very actively be trying to shift. You guys have been, okay? I see this beautiful shift of alignment, right? With this card of alignment. This is telling me that you have seen, you know, you've been through a lot and you have realized that your chakras are important. Your energetic body has realized this. Keep in mind our mental body our emotional, our physical bodies, they might not necessarily think about the chakras, but your energetic body knows that your life force energy is important and that your chakras should be um, pretty aligned. Now, remember, in my opinion, you know, to have your chakras completely aligned is like, you know, monk energy or something, right? That's something that you might not achieve. That's, you could, but it is hard. But what I see is that you have done stuff, especially with the heart chakra. You've really balanced that. 
with the solar plexus, especially I'm feeling for you guys with the root, with the throat, you have really worked on balancing those out and becoming in alignment with your new self. Um, because of this air energy, this paradigm shift. Also, when we talk about air, we're, we're talking about communication, right? I think there has been a lot of communication with you and your higher self. Um, this is also um, a note that the Lemurians want to communicate with you further. So after this reading, go ahead and do some more research on the Lemurians. But I do think that you have communicated with the, your higher self and you have seen what needs to go, right? What is no longer aligning with you? And the thing is, is a lot of people, you know, they think automatically the death of things, the no longer aligning the misalignment of things is a negative thing and it's not a negative thing it's it just is so if you have held a belief at one point in your life a, a spiritual belief a religious belief um or something like that and it changes let it change if you liked particular passions you know let's say you freaking loved i don't know what's a passion i don't know photography and now you just like painting more you don't really do photography anymore there's nothing wrong with that and it can be things like that it can be hobbies but it can be big things too right it's you know what I want to do with my life it's who I want in my life all of those things change and let me tell you pile number two again they are meant to change okay don't think that they changed because you did something wrong you said something wrong no 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 they were meant to change. If they changed, they were meant to change. Okay. And I think that things will continue to change for you. And I don't want you to be alarmed by that. The reason why I say that is because over here on the right side, we do have the water card. Beautiful card it says the overflow. So in that image, you can see that beautiful Lemurian being. She is having almost like the water run through her hands and, and flow out from her heart chakra, flow out from her body. And to me, this is really indicating that there is still a lot. And I don't want to say, I don't want to say that to scare you, okay, by any means, but more so to make you aware. There still is a lot in the emotional body that it needs to be purged, okay? So when we're talking about emotional body, this is things that we still have an attachment to emotionally that no longer serve us. Um, and again, that can be a belief, that can be a hobby, a passion, that can be a person, that can be a, a career, you know, the list goes on and on, but it, it feels like there is still some sort of attachment that is needs to flow through you. And, um, when we talk about purging again, sometimes purging sounds kind of intense. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you and say it's all, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Purging and getting rid of things that no longer serve us sometimes can be intense, okay? But the thing is, is that it is necessary, again, and there's nothing to be afraid of. But I want you to really focus, go inward, communicate with your higher self, and just say, you know, what is no longer in alignment with me? and let it flow. What is being communicated to you? Even if it's something you don't want to hear, you know, um, I want you to really listen to it. And I want you to tap into the Lemurians and I want you to tap into your higher self. And, you know, usually, like I said, in, in my past videos, when we have a psychic, you know, thought, something comes into us, we don't have time to, to ruminate on it. It's just like that. So if you're like, what doesn't align with me? And it's like, you know, the name of somebody. And you're like, oh, you know, I don't know, you know, but if it's, if it is, it is. Okay. And so let things just flow and notice how we have overflow. Purging is still a natural um, flow to things because purging kind of sounds like, okay, I'm taking stuff out, boom, taking it out and getting rid of it. And it's not an aggressive way like that. The overflow is we're simply letting things flow in the natural way they're meant to flow. And so if a certain person no longer is in alignment with you, they are doing their own thing, you are doing their own thing, let that emotional 
let those emotions release, let them flow through you. And I say emotional because we have water. Um, and when we have emotional attachments and emotional ties, it can get pretty intense. And so I do want to let you know that as we are, you know, we're dealing with retrograde now, many planets, you are going to feel emotional about this. I will, will not lie to you. Okay. There's a lot of blue here too. There's a lot of throat chakra. So throat chakra also is, is related to communication, but the throat chakra is also about right speaking our truth. Remember you are speaking your truth and let things go. And it's okay to be emotional. If you want to cry about it, please cry about it. Please. You know, I cry a lot. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a way of release. If you want to grieve about it, please do. But also realize that it is necessary, okay? And like I said, I don't want to scare you guys, pile number two. No, no, no. It's not about that. It just letting you know there's still a lot of purging. And when we have purging too, this can be stuff, you know, this can be still stuff that is from our past. Um, I think it's probably mainly in this lifetime, but it can be in other lifetimes as well. And uh, it might all of a sudden come up for you and you're like, whoa, and you have to face it. And yeah, I want you to face it, but then I want you to let it go. And I want you to flow out. Just literally think of it as like, okay, it's going through my system and it's flowing out. And I am letting that shit go, okay? Um, so I know that sounds a little intense, but I just want to make you guys aware of that. And know that your higher self is there for you. There are people in your life that are there for you. Um, the Lemurians are there for you. Um, I'm here for you, right? And like, know this is part of your journey, okay? And know that there is love to be had with this, okay? This is a beautiful, energetic, um, what kind of word do I want to use with that? Process, I suppose you could say. It's a beautiful, energetic process that needs to happen and will happen. And I think it's going to really happen soon for you. But <clears throat> let things, again, go. What no longer aligns with me? That should be your question going forward. You can journal about it. What no longer aligns with me? Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this reading pile number two, and I will go ahead and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right. If you are... Pile number three, this is your reading. We have a gorgeous aquamarine point here. So beautiful. We are going to see what messages the ancient Lemurians have for you. So the first card is number 11 with ether, the seamless unspeakable. Oh, wow. This artwork in this deck is just, I know I keep saying it throughout this video, but wow, it is just breathtakingly beautiful. Okay, we also have, yup, healing. You know, you might want to check pile number twos as well because it's already looking pretty similar with that. Um, endless opportunities though, wow. Okay, so you might want to watch pile number twos as well. You don't have to, of course. But what I see here for you, pile three, there is a lot of healing happening right now for you. There is a lot of healing happening. And this healing is happening on a lot of levels. It's happening on an energetic level, on a physical level, even um, emotional, spiritual, mental. There's healing happening. And this healing is something that you've been doing for a while. Um, and it's something that you will continue to do. And I want you to know that. It is a, it is a beautiful process, healing. Okay, but I want to call your attention to about that ether card. So with that ether, we're talking really about like the spirit element. There's a lot with communication here. There's a lot with particular beings like the Lemurians, um, maybe uh, uh, star beings, uh, angels, other types of spirit guides and things that are really connecting to you guys recently. I think there's 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 trying to be at least a lot of communication. I want to definitely draw your attention to the number 11 here. 11, 11, 1, 1, 1. Also, 1, 2, 3 is another one. It's coming through. 
Um, but with the seamless unspeakable, the ether, oh, this is such a powerful card. You know, I think it would be in your best interest to really tap in to your past lives. Um, and you can do that through, you know, me if you'd like to, but you can do it through other spiritualists and you can do it through yourself as well, to be honest. Okay. I'm not going to say that you can't, you can access your past lives. And, you know, I think that you, I don't like to, if somebody is interested in their past lives, most likely their soul is already ready to. Um, but if you feel that sometimes you're not in the great, greatest mindset, headspace, I don't recommend going into your past lives at that point because our past lives are full of beauty, they're full of love, they're full of joy, but they're also full of darkness, okay? And so I want to let you guys know, though, that I think you're ready, okay? I think now is a great time so to look back into your past lives, your past lives here on Earth, as a human, your past lives, as well as a Lemurian, because I can tell you already, because the past life thing came up, you're, you most definitely lived as a Lemurian at some point. And I think that there's a lot to know there and a lot to heal. And right now, when I'm making this video anyway, there are a lot of planets in retrograde. There is a lot of stuff coming up for people, and there will be, and it's an intense time. There's a lot of purging. Okay. And what I mean by purging again is particular memories and particular really almost, you know, particular DNA strands even. Things are getting lit up in a way. They are coming to the surface and that can create quite a response. Okay. And something that I've learned, and I'm going to give you guys this advice as well. When we are dealing with purging, when things are coming up, purging, it can include, you know, abuse that we've endured on in this lifetime. It can in, in, include sickness that we've dealt with and relationships that we've dealt with. It can, it can deal with past lives as well, which in your case, I think there's a lot of past life trauma too. Um, when this comes up, a lot of people, and I myself do it still to this day, you know, a lot of people tend to ignore a lot of people are like, you know what, I'm feeling down. I'm going to order myself a delicious pizza and watch a movie. I'm feeling down. I'm going to go play a video game. You know what? That's me. You guys might not know this about me, but I freaking love video games. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, my escapism, to a certain extent, is playing video games. But there can it can be an unhealthy escapism for me as well. Because sometimes when something's coming out, things are purging. I'm like, you know what, turn on, you know, live in my video game world for a little bit and forget about stuff and to a certain extent escapism is okay but we don't want to do that all the time right and so instead of pushing it down pushing down the feelings that we have I feel sad today instead of saying you know put on a funny movie you say why do I feel sad and if you say you know well I don't know why I feel sad doesn't matter feel sad okay and that's something that you know if you watch other videos people might not agree with when I say that but it's honestly the truth if you're sad feel sad if you're jealous feel jealous okay you're still meant to experience those third dimensional emotions now when I say feel again it's kind of like pile two. We talked about the overflow. We talked about water. It's like water. It's like a wave. Here comes the wave. Woo, doo, 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 wow. You know, let's, let's take an example. Heartbreak. Okay. Let's say <sighs> the loss of someone, whether that be physical death, whether that be a relationship ending loss. Okay. We're, we're, we're dealing with our normal day and all of a sudden, you know, something makes us think about loss and boom, boom, boom. It's okay. It's okay. And bam, we're faced with it. We can cry. We can feel mad about it, feel more sad about it, but we, we acknowledge it, we face it, we feel it, we purge it out of our system. And, and that's not something that happens overnight, okay? This takes many, many times, but we, we feel it. The way to purging those memories in a way, or I shouldn't say, we don't want to purge memories, but rather the, the negative energy associated with them. That's, that's a better way to say it. We have to feel it, but then we let it go. We feel it so strongly, but then we let it go. Now, if we feel it so strongly over and over and over and over, 
and we don't let it go, and that's our entire day, that's when we can have an issue, right? Because what I see here, and this is so pretty, we have all of these butterflies in here, bluish green. I say this all the time, but the blue butterfly, that is the spiritual symbol of mine as well. This reading really is resonating with me too. We have all these butterflies here, and of course, butterflies are symbols of change. They're symbols of metamorphosis. And this is something, and I've mentioned it before in some of my videos, and I'm sorry if I re-say it to you, but I just want to make note about a butterfly, okay? There's something so beautiful to me about a butterfly, and it's, it's you know, people think about, okay, well, a butterfly, it's a caterpillar, and then it changes into a butterfly, and so that's probably why they're like, okay, change. But to me, it's more than that, because when you think about a caterpillar, you know, it goes and it just knows it's time. It's like, okay, it's my time. And it creates this beautiful cocoon. And it basically dissolves itself into this goo. So it really changes its form. And then it eventually, you know, emits and comes out of its chrysalis, its cocoon as a beautiful butterfly. But what's important about that is that the caterpillar did all of that by itself. It wasn't like some other caterpillar was like, hey, man, let me help you with that. Like, I mean, I know that might sound funny, but it's true. That caterpillar freaking purged the hell out of itself, changed its entire form, and it was like a phoenix rising from the ashes, and it didn't need anybody but itself. And I want you to remember that. Every connection you have on this planet with a person, with a passion, Every connection, it might offer you things. It might be beautiful, but you don't need it. And I know it's crazy to think about because you might think, oh, no, no, I need my, my friend. I need my lover. You don't need them. You like them. You love them. You love having their company. But I promise you, you have everything that you will ever need in your own beautiful body, okay, in your own ethereal auric body you have everything you will ever need to succeed and there are endless as this card says endless opportunities in front of you pile three but it's about change and that change is not going to happen if we don't address these emotions that come up if we don't address these experiences that come up address them and how you do that is up to you if it's crying it's crying if it's painting if it's something where we're putting our energy into it and we're feeling that emotion and we're letting it go and think of it like a butterfly, we have it and it flies away, okay? So wow, you know, that this pile three was actually making me a little emotional because it really resonates, you know, sometimes, sometimes a lot of the piles I'm like, okay, you know, that makes sense to me, but sometimes this one hit home, guys, this pile three hit home for me. But what's important too, Pile 3, is sometimes I think you forget the gifts you have. Again, like I, I feel sometimes you forget how strong you are, how beautiful you are. And when I'm talking about beauty, I'm not talking on the surface level, although I'm pretty sure you're very beautiful on the surface level too. But I'm talking about your soul. And I'm talking about how strong and powerful you are. And then you have these intuitive abilities. You have these psychic gifts. Even if you don't you know, use them on a regular basis, they're there. They're there, excuse me, within all of us. But wow. Wow. That is really powerful message came through for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this pile number three. And I hope you will uh, come back and watch another video of mine. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.